Greetings, students. Let's discuss uh, chapter 10 test. Question 1. So here I want to find x. So I've got 72, I've got 8, and I've got x. I can use the law of sines, or I can use Sokotoa. Why don't we do the law of sines here? So x divided by the sine of 90, because x is across from the 90, is equal to, and this angle here doesn't go with the side we're looking for, but this angle here does. So that angle on the top is 18. 8 divided by the sine of 18. So I'll divide this out. 8 divided by sine of 18. 8 divided by sine of 18. Sorry, you can't see that very well. I'll get the... Um, oh, that's not right. We're in... Um, what happened here is we're in rating mode. Like I said before, you have been in degree mode here. <clears throat> so you go to mode and you go to degree. And um, one way to check is that the sine of 90 is always 1. So I can go to second enter and bring back the uh, 8 divided by sine of 18. This is the proper answer, about 26. 25.9. I didn't bother to multiplying by the sine of 90 because the sine of 90 is 1. I have that memorized. But if you didn't, you'd say times by the sine of 90 here afterwards. Now, I didn't have to do that. I could have used cosine. Cosine of 72 equals 8 over x. Because cosine is adjacent hypotenuse. So cosine 72 equals 8 over x. So then I could switch the, um, the cosine and the uh, x, and I get 8 divided by cosine 72. That'd be uh, the same answer. All right, next one. This one, I'm looking for the angle. So this is uh, opposite hypotenuse. Four, seven's opposite from the theta and 14's hypotenuse. So the sine of theta is equal to 14 divided by 7. Sorry. 7 divided by 14. Opposite hypotenuse, about it's on the bottom. So theta is the arc sin, or arc sine of 7 fourteenths. Second, sine, 7 divided by 14 about 30 degrees. Exact 30 degrees, in fact. All right, find the exact value of the trigonometric function, tangent 45. If I type in tangent 45, it's going to give me 1. Now, again, if this ends up being a decimal, you're going to have to match it with the appropriate, the appropriate root. All right, order of matrices, you count rows by columns. Rows by columns. So this one has three rows, three rows by four columns. So three by four columns. All right, five and six are co-questions. So it says write the linear system of equations here. This is x, y, and this is a constant. This is x and y and equals. So negative 2x plus 3y equals 2. 3x minus 4y equals negative 4. Think about number six for a minute. I just had somebody text me and I gotta write them real quick here. Sorry, sorry about that. So this and these two are co-questions as I was saying before. So in this matrix I'm going to make, I'm going to put X in the first column, I'm going to put Y in the second column, Z in the third column, and then I'm going to put the number it equals in the last column. So this is negative 1X, there's no Y here, 0Y, plus positive 3Z equals 0. And the next one is negative 5X, plus 2y plus 2z equals 2. The next one's 3x plus 1y minus 4z equals 1. Cool. <coughs> All right, next items. For this to be undefined, remember the rows and the columns have to not match. So if it's undefined, the rows won't match the columns, and you won't be able to do it. 
all of these here that I have on this examples are defined. So here I'm going to do 2 minus negative 4. You might want to do with the minus, change it to a plus, and then change all these opposite signs if that makes better sense to you. So I'll do that. Change it to a plus, change these to be all opposite signs. And then just add. Because that's usually easier. 2 plus 4 is 6. 5 plus 3 is 8. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. Negative 1 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 2. <coughs> 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. Here we're just going to add 1 plus 6 is 7. 5 plus 1 is 6. Here once again we've got subtract, so I'm going to change the signs. 3, 10, and negative 5. And here we got multiply by a constant. So we can double all these numbers. Positive 2, negative 6, positive 10, positive 12. Just double them all. Every question is worth the same amount. We got um, 20 questions total. So that right there is halfway through the test. And it took me six minutes, including a text I sent. So th there's no reason why you should do poorly with these. All right, multiplication is a little bit more lengthy. So here I've got two rows by three columns. Here I've got three rows or by, by two columns. These match. So that means multiplication is possible. And we're going to end with a two by two. So our, our finished matrix is going to have two rows and two columns. It's going to be a square matrix. Now I can use a calculator here to multiply these, or I can do it by hand. If I do it by hand, it's going to involve multiplying the rows by the columns. So we're going to have six numbers here, six numbers here, six numbers here, six numbers here. We're going to have 24 numbers total to multiply then add. We can also do it on the calculator. So let me do one part by hand and then you can do the other ones on the calculator if you want. It doesn't matter if you do any of them on the calculator though. So this is negative 30 minus 15 minus 24. How did I get negative 30? Negative 5 times 6. How did I get negative 15? Negative 3 times 5. How did I get negative 24? 6 times negative 4. So negative 30 minus 15 is negative 45 minus 24 is negative 69. That goes in the first row, first column. Let me do the rest of it on the calculator. So second matrix, edit. We have a 2 by 3, 2 rows, 3 columns. So negative 5, negative 3, and 6. 2, 3, and negative 3. I'm going to quit out, go back in, put the other one in. The other one's a 3 by 2. 6, negative 2, 5, 5, negative 4, and 3. And all I can do here is going to take from the matrix menu A times B. And there we get our matrix. Negative 69, 13, 39, and 2. And two. All right, let's look at this one. This one's a 2 by 3, 2 rows, 3 columns, times a 3 by 1. This is going to be a 2 by 1. Again, the columns match the rows. So we're good to go for multiplication. So it'll be 2 by 1. So it's only going to be two numbers here in our finished answer. Two numbers is it. So row 1, row 1 and row 2 is all we have here. Row 1 and row 2. So this will be 10 plus 0 plus 8. 10 plus 0 plus 8. 18. This will be 12 plus 0 minus 24. 12 plus 0 minus 24. Negative 12. And again, you can use a calculator here to do these. You do not have to do these by hand. You can multiply this times this on the calculator. All right, there's the front. Work on the back. Determinants. Give that one a try. i got to respond again. Sorry.
All right, so to evaluate determinants, these ones are the easy ones, uh, two by twos. So can we multiply diagonally? Negative five times negative four. Negative five times negative four is, ne is a positive 20 minus zero times negative three. So that's going to be zero. So it's going to be 20. Determinant here is 20, which is like the absolute value. This one, number 13, takes a little longer. So if you want to do this one by hand, you do have to repeat the first two columns underneath. And you're going to multiply diagonally coming down. There's three multiplications here. And you're going to add, multiply vertically coming up, like we did in class. I would recommend for this one, you type it in the calculator and use the calculator's ability to do it for you. As we talked about in class before, three by three. 4, negative 2, 1, negative 5, 0, negative 1, negative 4, 4, and 2. That's my matrix. I typed it in. So what I'm going to do now, under the math menu, I'm going to do DET, and I'm going to do A. That's where I type my matrix in. Negative 32. And I could have done the same thing on that other one. Second matrix. Edit. Let's put it in for B. 2 by 2, negative 5, negative 3, 0, and negative 4. And then you're going to do matrix math determinant of B to get to 20. All right. Solving systems equations, we can use matrices for these. If I want to use an augmented matrix, that's what I would do. So here I use DET of A. A is the matrix I typed in. So I'm going to use an augmented matrix here. going to be x, y, and then equals. So negative 4x plus 2y equals 16. 3x minus 1y, negative 11. And I'm going to do R, R, E, F of the matrix I use. So I'm going to put it in. Two rows, three columns. Negative 4, 2, 16, 3, negative 1, negative 11. And I'm going to put out the matrix. This time I'm going to do R, R, E, F. I'm going to put A inside again. X is negative 3, and Y is 2. Sorry, you couldn't see that. So I was going through it, but again, we're using R, R, E, F. So X is negative 3, and Y is 2. It's very easy to check your work here. You can put negative 3 in for x, negative 9, minus 2 is negative 11, positive 12, plus 4 is 16. Put 3 in, negative 3 in for x, put 2 in for y. You can also do these by hand. You don't have to use a matrix on this one. So you can double the bottom equation and add. So if I doubled the bottom, it would be 6x minus 2y equals negative 22. So we would add them together, we get 2x equals negative 6, and 2 into 6, negative 6 is negative 3. And then after we find negative 3 for x, we put it in, we find y. So you can also do it by hand if you want, like you did in algebra 1. All right, next one, my augmented matrix. I'm going to do x, y, z, and d equals. So I'm going to have negative 1x, negative 5y, negative 1z, negative 19. I'm going to have 2x minus 1y, no z, and 12. Negative 4x, 1y, negative 5z, and equals 5. So I'm going to put that in to one of my matrices. We'll use a again. 3 by 4, 3 rows, 4 columns. Negative 1, negative 5, negative 1, negative 19. 2, negative 1, 0, and 12. 4, 1, negative 5, Negative 5. I quit out. I'm going to do the same thing. Second matrix, math, R, R, E, F. And then second matrix, A. All right. So this one ends up being a decimal answer, kind of a kind of expected. So X, Y, and Z. I could make those into fractions, but I don't mind if we just round them to the tenths. 6.6, 1.2. 6.5. This one's harder to check your work. Much harder to check your work. 
and it's much diff more difficult to do by hand as well. So again, I recommend you use a calculator here. May, uh, check your work. Make sure you type everything in right. I mean, if you don't type the things in right, you're going to get the wrong answer. I put negative 5 at the bottom there. So there's, my, there's one of my mistakes. I thought this ended up being an integer. So let's see if it does now. Nope. So that makes it 6.7, 1.5, and 4.7. So you can see how it changes. This one I'm going to make a write-on question. Most of the rest of these are going to be, I should say most of the rest of these, pretty much all the rest of these are going to be uh, multiple choice. But this one will be write-on for that particular reason. So that way you can show work. And um, I can give you some partial for doing the augmented matrix. Even if you get the wrong or incorrect finished answer. I can check the work a little bit here by putting the answers in, but I rounded the answers off, so it's not going to be exactly equal. So if I put this, these answers in for x, it's not going to be exactly equal. So we do negative 4 times 6.75 plus 1.5 minus 5 times 4.7. It should be roughly 5. It's not here. So that right there kind of tells me I did something wrong. Oh, there's one of my mistakes. It's supposed to be positive 5y for 1. Positive 5, not negative 5. And this is supposed to be negative 4. Sorry, guys. I'm way off today with these. So let's try it now. And uh, this is going to happen to you guys, uh, some of you guys during the test. So it's good that it's happened to me now. Because it's going to happen to some of you guys during the test. And you're going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm not getting the answers out. You might have to work it four or five times by typing the numbers in until you get some, until you get an answer. So this looks like I thought it was going to be. But uh, let's check. Negative 4 times 4 minus 4 minus 5 times negative 5. There's 5. And I can check another one here. 2 times 4 minus negative 4. 12. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this one's going to be a right on question. Specifically, so I'm going to give you partial. And also so you guys can try the question over and over until you get something that ends up working. Don't give up on it. That's going to be one longer one to do. All right, the inverse matrices, again, I would highly recommend you just do these on the calculator. Instead of doing the math, the math by hand, 2 by 2, negative 7, 1, 8, and negative 2. There it is typed in. Negative 7, 1, 8, and negative 2. So just take the matrix, select it, use the negative 1 key. Uh, some of it will be fractional. You're going to have to arrow over to see the whole thing, perhaps. Like this one's got fractions. If the decimals bother you, you can make them fractions by doing math option one. And I'll make it fractions. If you don't want to use fractions, you want to use decimals, that's fine as well. Some of these are going to be decimal answers. It's just the nature of these questions. Because the determinant's going to be perhaps, you know, something larger where it's going to make it decimal is all. Anyways, so there's my answer in decimal form, or in fraction form. You can use decimals, too. All right, the second one here doesn't require any more effort as long as you know how to use a calculator with it. So just make sure, you use a, you make sure you're able to use a calculator with it, and no more effort required. 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 5, and 2, and then negative 1, negative 1, positive 1. And then... I'm going to do second matrix, select A, and choose negative 1. 3, 1, negative 2, 1, 0, 0, and then 4, 1, negative 1. Alright, read through the next ones. You got to respond again to this person.
All right, so this next one. This next one is um, kind of like a system of equations, but then it can be done different ways. So I'm going to show you perhaps a different way to do this than would be the normal way. It's a, it's a very common type of question on standardized tests. So Jane bought a pencil, a mechanical pencil, received $2 in change and 16 coins. That's all nickels and quarters. How much of each kind was given? So if they were all quarters, 16 quarters, if I take 16 divided by 4, because there's 4 quarters per dollar, that would be $4. So that tells me that it's not 16 quarters. So I'm going to decrease the amount of quarters. Well, if it was 12 quarters, that would equal three dollars. Still too much. So it can't be 12 quarters. If it was eight quarters, that's two dollars. You see what I'm doing here? But it can't be all quarters. There's got to be some nickels involved. So the question is, how many nickels? So we're at eight quarters now. We're going to decrease the amount of quarters, and then add to the amount of nickels. So if it was seven quarters, that would make it that would make it um, nine nickels. Seven quarters and nine nickels. So then I can do seven times twenty-five cents plus nine times five cents. Because there's sixteen coins total. Well that's still too much. It's two twenty. That's two dollars and twenty cents. I don't want 220. So I'm going to decrease the amount of quarters again. Six quarters, that would make it 10 nickels. Alright, so we're going to do instead of seven times, notice how I'm just arrow one up here. We're going to do um, second enter two as well. Second enter, second enter. And that'll bring up the last thing that was typed. <coughs> but you can do uh, the whole thing again. Seven times 0.25 plus 10 times 0 0.05. Two bucks. There we go. So she used six quarters and ten nickels. This is how I would probably do this question if it was given to me on a standardized test. I would probably, as a teacher, not even set up the equations for it. You can set up the equations for it, but this is how I would probably do it. Second question is the exact same question. Twenty-three nickels and ten dimes. So twenty-three dimes, because dimes is worth more, twenty-three dimes would be two dollars and thirty cents because each dime is ten cents so that's too much obviously too much so we're going to decrease the number of dimes until we get down to an appropriate amount well if it's fifteen dimes that's a buck fifty but then it's but then the amount of nickels there'd be eight nickels so it'd be too much so we're just going to decrease the amount of dimes until we get to the proper amount so let's say maybe ten dimes if there's ten dimes that means there's thirteen nickels let's figure out how much that is 10 dimes and 13 nickels. So 10 times 0.1 plus 13 times 0 0.05. That's $1.65. $1.65. So that tells me right there I gotta decrease the amount of dimes. So maybe nine dimes. And then it'd be 14 nickels. So if I do second entry, 14 nickels now. And instead of 10 dimes, nine dimes. That's a dollar sixty. Well, it's decreasing by five cents each. So, obviously, it's eight dimes and thirteen nickels. And I can do second entry, and I can do eight dimes, thirteen nickels. Eight and thirteen. Eight and thirteen. And yeah. Sorry, eight and fifteen. That's what I meant to say. Because it's got to be twenty-three coins total. My bad, guys. A little bit distracted today. Eight dimes and fifteen nickels is a dollar and fifty-five cents. So those are the work problems I'm going to give you this time around. Each of them is worth five. No need to fail. Please study. Please practice the calculator for the inverse matrices and the determinant here and the um, REF here. Good luck.